welcome to Heck the Hockey. First, <laughs> first episode of this NHL sort of series, I guess you could call it. Yeah, the NHL season just started, so we decided to make it, uh, a series about you know teams in the NHL and what we think is going to happen. So you know we created a show with four different segments with four different uh, categories. Explain the first two. All right, so the first two have to do with NHL teams. We picked a team that we think is going to turn it around, or turn around team, and one team that we think is going to crumble. So, turn around team might be doing bad this season, but trust me, they'll get better. And the crumble team, you might think they're doing well now, but trust me, they're going to fall out of playoff contention pretty soon. And then we have two other categories where we just talk about players. We have the breakout player, a guy who might not be doing so well now or didn't do well last year. He's having, he's going to have a breakout season this year and the dud player, where the guy, so much hype around him, he was really good last year, and he's just not gonna make it, he's not gonna do well. And he's on top this year right now, and he might fall. And I know a lot of our viewers wanted a hockey video, so let's jump right into it. All right, so we have the same turnaround team. Yeah. Uh, we try to make two different teams, but we came to the same conclusion. The Anaheim Ducks are our turnaround team. Currently, their record through 12 games is 3-7-2. They're last place in the Western Conference with eight points, and they're also last place in their division. Corey Perry, he had 33 goals for them last season. He only has one goal through 12 games. They're averaging 1.4 goals per game and allowing 2.6. Um, so based off these numbers, you know this is uncharacteristic. They got to the Western Conference Finals last year's last year against the Los Angeles Kings. You know they had 100 points. They were first in the Pacific Division, and they finished first in the Western Conference. And it was their second year finishing first in the Western Conference. So you think last year going into the season, wow, this team is going to be great. Yeah. And they're really just disappointing. They're in the bottom of the standings. And, you know, their leading scorer right now, uh, you know, he's just not, you know, their leading scorer from last year is not doing well. He's 33 goals. Like I said, he only has yeah. one. It's very uncharacteristic. I don't know. I honestly have no idea what's going on. Maybe they need a coaching change. But if you look at their numbers from last year, like I said, they were first in the Western Conference. They were first in their division. Their second year finishing first in the Western Conference. They made it all the way to the Western Conference Finals. Yeah. And, you know, I just think that they're going to come back strong. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, there's only one real reason that, you know, me and Rob could have picked the same team, and that's because it's an obvious choice. Right. I mean, this is, this is unbelievable. This is a team that... Uh, the past two seasons, uh, they've gotten over 100 points on the season, uh, over 50 wins, and you know now through 12 games they only have three. Something's got to be up. Yeah. Right. You know, I did some I did some research on um, their power play percentage, how well they do, how many goals they score on a power play based uh -huh. on how many opportunities. Uh, so far this season, they have four goals in 37 attempts. That's only 11 percent power play percentage. That's ranked last in the NHL. Um, and last season. They scored 37 goals out of 235 attempts. That's about 16% power play percent. So wow. they're down 5%. Uh, this is a team that clearly is struggling on offense. But the only thing I can say that will make people, you know, pick this team to turn it around and do better, their penalty kill percentage this year is 90.5. That ranks wow. second in the NHL. They're doing a great job defensively, despite having a terrible record. They're just, the goals aren't falling for them and right now. Let me just add another stat. Um, the Anaheim Ducks have the most wins when trailing at any point in the third period in NHL history. They had 18 wins in trailing in the third period uh, last season. They had 24 comeback wins last season, and they had 26 the season before. So that kind of gives you hope that you know they, they can make comebacks, and this team can make a comeback this year, which I think they will. And, and their goalie, yeah. uh, Frederick Anderson, he ranks top 10 in save percentage with a .934. And he's the top 10 goalie right now in goals against average. He's only given up like two goals a game. Right. And he's keeping him in. And their guy who got the fourth most uh, primary assist last year at 31 has zero this so far. Mm -hmm. So something's got to turn around. But now let's go to the team that's going to crumble. Colin, what you choose? All right, my crumble team, I took the Boston Bruins. Um, and, you know, this season, through 12 games, they've had six wins, five losses, one overtime loss, 13 total points. Um, you know, they have a positive record, more wins than losses. But the thing I can say about the Boston Bruins, that Atlantic division is so tough in the Eastern Conference. I mean, they're dominated by Montreal, Tampa Bay, not to mention Detroit and Ottawa. Right. They, there's so much talent in that division that I just don't think Boston can compete. Their penalty kill is 70%. That's last in the NHL. 
Their defense is horrendous. They're giving up 3.3 um, goals per game. I mean, that is ranked 28th in the NHL, but they're scoring 3.8 goals per game. That's first in the NHL. So you're looking at a team that just has so much offensive talent and their defense is terrible. Wow. So, uh, I, I mean, I, all right, I'll finish up here. I mean, their goalie um, is doing terrible. I believe his name is Tuka Rask. Tuka uh, Rask. Yeah. Uh, he's given up uh, 3.5 goals a game. You know, and it's not all his fault. Um, their defensemen, they rank 55th uh, in block shots. Wow. Defensemen Zadino Chara and Kevin Miller have 19 so far. That ranks 55th. They're, they're, they're awful at home. They're a great team on the road. This is a team that had a lot of success in the past years. Yeah. But this year, I just don't think it's going to happen because some nights, those shots aren't going to fall. You could have a great offensive team, but sometimes you get shut out, and they don't have a defense to hold them up. And Chara... He's been playing for a while. He's pretty old. So yeah. I, I feel like that's going to change. So for my team, that's going to crumble is the Winnipeg Jets. They're better than the Boston Bruins. They're 8-4-2, 18 points. They're third in their uh, central division. They're fourth in the Western Conference. Um, their points leader, who also leads them in goals, has six goals and 11 assists. Um, they're averaging three goals a game. They're, averaging, uh, they're allowing 2.6 goals a game. And they have the second most goals scored in the entire Western Conference. Now... You hear all that, wow, the Win Winnipeg Jets are really good this year. Here are the reasons for the doubt. They had 99 points last year, and they just barely made the playoffs, finishing 7th in the Western Conference. They finished 5th in their Central Division, and they were swept 4 nothing in the first round of the playoffs. Their leading scorer was Andrew Ladd, who had 24 goals and 38 assists, finishing with 62 points last season, and he's only played two full seasons in his 13-year career. This year, he has three goals and five assists through those 12 games, through those 14 games, and so far uh, they've allowed the third most goals out of any team that made the playoffs last year. So they, last year they allowed the third most goals, that was 210, and that was the third most out of any team that made the playoffs. Um, so right now, like I said, they're third, they're fourth in the Western Conference, and the teams I think are going to pass them were the Blackhawks, the Minnesota Wild, and the Los Angeles Kings. See, the Blackhawks, they've been struggling lately. Um, you know, with all the allegations around Patrick Kane, you know, out of the locker room stuff, now that that case is rested and there shouldn't be any more drama, as far as we know, we, I think that the Blackhawks will come together, be the dynasty that they've always been, and win the Stanley Cup. Uh, they're going to push through the season, and I feel like the Minnesota Wild and the Kings, they're young teams, you know, they have good goalies, uh, and I feel like they're just going to make a strong pull, and I feel like the Winnipeg Jets aren't a stable team, and I think... It just happens to be the beginning of the season. I mean, look at last year, the New Jersey Devils. You know, I'm embarrassed as a Devils fan to say that we, we started the year so well, and then we just tanked. And I feel like that's going to be the Winnipeg Jets. And, you totally know, agree. Something's got to give. All right. So let's move on uh, to our players. Uh, we're going to start with our breakout player, somebody we think will come out of nowhere and do fantastic. Um, would you like to start? Yeah. Uh, I picked uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov, the center for the Washington Capitals. Uh, he has played, all right, so his career stats, let's go over. His first NHL season, which was two years ago, he only played in 17, 17 games. He had three goals, six assists, nine points, and 22 shots on goal. His second season was last year. He played in 80 games, 11 goals, 26 assists, and 37 points. He had 127 shots on goal, and he averaged only 13 minutes on ice per game for the, both seasons combined. So based off, based off those stats, Pretty trash guy. Why would he ever do something well? Right, right. Well, let's go to this year. Through 12 games, he has five goals, nine assists, and 14 points. He has 24 shots on goal, and he's currently tied for seventh in points this season. His time on the ice, he's averaging about 18 minutes per game, and he's playing with Alex Ovenchkin. So Alex Ovenchkin is going to give him the puck. He's the leader in that locker room. Alex Ovenchkin will be, I think, a Hall of Famer potentially. And he's only 23 years old, this guy. Yeah. So he's got a lot of potential. And if you look at his stats, he's, gonna, he's been improving. And already through the first 12 games, he's up there. And I feel like he's going to push through and be the breakout guy that no one knew of last year. And he's going to be a great guy this year. And 18 minutes isn't even that much. So right. he's getting a ton of production with not even that many minutes. Only imagine what happens when uh, a couple of those guys like Ovenchkin and uh, Semin leave. Yeah, that's true. All right, so my breakout player, um, I'm going to stick with my Boston, well, not mine, I don't like them, I'm a Devils fan like Rob, but I'm going to stick with the Boston Bruins, uh, and I'm going to pick one of their defensemen, Tory Krug, um, he's 24 years old, um, he's second on the Bruins on their defensive depth chart, 
Um, it's his fifth season in the NHL. All of them have been with Boston, so he's familiar with the Bruins. Um, so far this season, we see a huge boost in minutes for him. Um, uh, last season, he averaged about 19 and a half minutes per game. This season, he is at like 23 and a half minutes per game. A huge jump. Um, so obviously, they're trusting him more. He's on an offensive powerhouse team, like I said, not good for the team because I think they'll crumble, but good for someone's stats because they're amazing at scoring goals. Um, uh, so already he has 10 points, all assists. So, you know, points are points uh, in 11 games. Uh, last season, he, and actually the last two seasons, he's averaged only 40 points. <laughs> so he's already one-fourth of the way there, right. and we're not even like one-seventh of the way through the season. So you do that math, and yeah, I mean, he's on pace for over 70 points, nearly double of what he had last season. Um, and he's also a guy who stays healthy. He's had back-to-back 78-plus -back game seasons, only missing a few games a year. This is a guy I think is going to come out, break out this year, and have a really stellar year. Yeah, so you want to move on to the dud player? Yeah, all right. All right. Go ahead. Okay, so my dud player is from the Pittsburgh Penguins, right winger Patrick Hornquist, 28 years of age. Um, in his past two seasons, this is a guy we've seen get over 50 total points, usually gets over 20 goals and 20 assists every year. Um, you know, this season, though, through 12 games, he only has four points. You know, you, you, put, that, you put that on an average, he's on pace for 28 points. That's nearly half of the production he had last year. He's also creeping up there in age. His time on ice is declining from 17 and a half minutes to 16 minutes so far per game. That's, that's nearly two minutes less from the previous year. Um, he's also on a line with Sidney Crosby. I love Sidney Crosby. I think he's fantastic. But I think Sidney Crosby would rather take a shot than pass it to him. So that takes away from his value. And... You know, the Penguins are 24th in goals per game. Their offense is struggling. That's a huge topic this NHL season is how bad they're struggling. Yeah. So the more the Penguins struggle, the worse this guy's going to do. I just, I don't see a good year out of him. Yeah, and Crosby's going to want to take control, like you said. He's, he's that kind of guy. Yeah. So my guy for the dud is Henrik Zetterberg, the left winger of the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, in his first 12 seasons, he, had, he played in, in 836 games. He scored 296 goals, 490 assists, and he had 786 points with 2,866 shots on goal, which is amazing. Yeah. Last year, he had one of his best seasons yet. He finished with 66 points in 77 games. That includes the first uh, 12 years, so that's like one of the best he's had. And this year so far, in his 12 games he's played, he has 3 goals, 11 assists, and 14 points with 26 shots on goal. Now, he's currently tied with seven for, with, for seventh in points this season with uh, our breakout player, Evgeny Kunsenkov. Um, but the thing is, Henrik is 35 years old, and uh, which is top, he's in the top 20 for the oldest players currently playing in the NHL. Um, he's 25th with most points in the NHL last season. Um, Detroit is currently tied for eighth place in the Eastern Conference with the Boston Bruins and the New Jersey Devils. And, Zetter, and basically his play depends on how his team plays. He's an assist guy. Clearly, he has 11 assists in the first 12 games, which is amazing. But I feel like injury is going to come up on him. He's 35. A lot of these guys who are old, you know, it's, it's going to affect them sometime. And he's been blessed so far with not having a, a really horrific injury that's kept him out for an entire season. So I think that, I hate to say it, I don't want to wish harm on anyone. But I feel like this might be the season where he starts to decline. Even though he had one of his best seasons in his career last year, I don't feel like he's going to put up the same production. Like I said, Detroit is struggling right now. They're tied with the Devils and the Bruins for 8th place in the Western Conference. And he depends on, on how the rest of his team is playing. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> All so, right. That kind of sums it up. Uh, you know, comment down below if you really like this. Uh, we would love to keep this going. If we missed anyone, just let us know. You know, there are a lot of other guys out there. Can't each yeah, other. Who, who's your dud player? Yeah. Who's your stud player? Who's your breakout team? Who's your bad team? We want to know yeah. everything. If we offended you, uh, their favorite team, we're sorry. Yeah, we're sorry about that. But, you know, it's, it's based on the stats. You know, what was your favorite stat? Whatever. Put everything in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe. We love doing this NHL stuff. First video we've ever done. I think it went really well. Yeah, hopefully it improves every time we do it. All right, we'll see you next time.